And so I'm excited, so excited about what God is going to do in the new year. There are some great things coming up, some exciting things coming up, and I'm glad to be a part of a, of a church. I want you to look around you today, y'all. Look at this place and look at, this is what I'm thankful for. I'm so thankful for a church that is a whosoever will church. Amen? And I'm going to tell you, I'm glad to know that I go to a church where I can feel the presence of God. You know, this is, I'm telling you, something good's going to happen here today. I said, something good's going to happen here today, y'all. I, I mean, you, you're going to leave here changed, amen? You're going to leave here different in Jesus' name. And uh, we're, we just, the, we know the Lord has a special word. I was praying about what the word for 2024 was going to be. What is it the word that God has for us? I was thinking about what is the theme of 2024? What's, it, what's 2024 going to be all about? And I prayed for the last several weeks. I asked the Lord, what am I supposed to say to your people about 2024? And I heard the Lord say this, two words, there's more. There's more. There's more. I heard two words. I heard the Lord say, there's more. And you could go ahead and say it like this if you wanted to. I mean, I really didn't. You know, I wasn't trying to rhyme or, you know, or anything like that. But you could say there's more in 2024. Amen. But I heard those two words. There's more. There's more. That God has more. And I, I began to think about that. And I thought, Lord, when you say there's more, what is it? I mean, I, 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 get, the, I get the idea of it. But, Lord, isn't it, isn't it a little deeper than that? And as the Lord began to move in my heart, I began to think about all that's going on in the world around us. And what has happened in, in recent days and in recent months is we know what's happening in Israel. We know the war that's going on over there. And, and when the war began in Israel, it kind of shifted the church to, to begin to think about the end times. And we had a lot of end time preaching and a lot of end time teaching and a lot of things happening and people are thinking about. And, and I do believe today that we are living in the last of the last days. I believe that. But then the Lord said, but remind my people, glory to God, that I'm not done yet. That there is more, more souls to be saved, more people to be healed, more churches to be started, more things to be done in the kingdom of God. God is not through with you yet. There is more. Touch somebody next to you and say, there's more. There's more. God wants to do more, more things in the kingdom of God, more blessing in his kingdom. And so I began to think about how all of this started with the church. I began to think about even the life of Jesus himself. And this is, this is what I want you to do. Now, now listen, we got one service today, and we got to make this thing count. So take your watch off and put it under your seat. I'm not going to hold you long, but I am going to hold you till I'm done. Amen. Because I have a word for you. And let me tell you what I sense in this room. I sense that you came to church today because you want to hear a word from God. That's what I sense. And I don't take this word lightly. That's why when I finished it yesterday, when I put the, finest, the finishing touch on it, I went straight to Facebook and said, hey, I want to let the church know I've finished this word for Sunday. and We're ready. Amen. And many of you came on and saw and responded, and I appreciate that today. But I want to take the next few moments and, and share with you if I can, and I, and I don't want to get in a hurry because I want to be able to give this as the Holy Spirit gave it to me. In order for us to understand that there's more, we have to look today at the life of Jesus himself. I want to begin today our, our text verse. This is what I want to use as our text verse. It's a word that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. And maybe this is the verse that we will use as a theme verse for 2024. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. 
The scripture says, but as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things. Everybody say things. That's plural. Amen. Many things. The things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Amen. How many of you know God's got a lot of things prepared for us? A lot of blessings still yet. There's more. Turn to the other person you didn't turn to last time and say, there's more. There's more. When I think about the life of Jesus, I think his life itself was an example that every day in the life of a believer, there is more that God wants to do. When you study the life of Jesus, Jesus, the first 30 years of his life, there were certain things that were significant that took place in his life. And, you know, I'm, you know one thing that stands out in, in my mind, you remember Jesus' parents were missing him at one time and they couldn't find him. And when they found him, he was in the synagogue and he was teaching the doctors and lawyers. At 12 years old, they were marveled at his knowledge. You know, but the first 30 years of Jesus' life was just, it's, it's, there's not a whole lot that's recorded about what went on during that time, but just life itself. But then something happened when Jesus turned 30. Anybody 30 here today? Raise your hand. Any 30-year-olds here today? Anybody 30, 32, 35, that, you know, right around there? Raise your hand. Oh, look at this church. Wow. This is a 30s church. Glory to God. Amen. And when Jesus turned 30 years old, something significant happened in his life. We can find this in Luke chapter 3. In Luke chapter 3, verse 21, the Bible said, And now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was open. Hallelujah. How many of you want to open heaven in 2024? The heaven was open, and the Holy Ghost, everybody say the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. Upon who? Upon Jesus. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. One thing I want you to understand, that Jesus in that moment, not only does the Bible say that Jesus was baptized in water, but in that particular time, Jesus himself was baptized in the Holy Ghost. Do you see that? Oh, let me prove it to you. When you go to chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says this, and Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Jesus had lived the first 30 years of his life. Significant things had, had happened. Wonderful things had transpired. I'm sure he experienced a lot of great things. But when he turned 30, something else started to take place. There was more that started to happen in his life. He was baptized in water. And, and then who he was was, uh, was, was uh, verified there as he was in the water, Jesus in the water, the voice coming from heaven, the Father, and the Holy Spirit descending on him in the form of a dove. It was validified. Who he was was validified that very day in that moment and he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And this is the beginning of more. Everybody say more. More in the life of Jesus. For the next three years, it would be more. Everybody say more. It would be more. As a matter of fact, as we begin to follow the Scripture, and I want you to follow me right here. You don't have to turn. You're, I'm going to go too quick for you to turn. I just want you to hear me for just a few moments because I want to show you just how much more was done in the life of Jesus after he was baptized with the Holy Spirit. Jesus, first of all, the Scripture tells us that Jesus turned water into wine in John chapter 2. Jesus heals an official son 
at Capernaum in Galilee in John chapter 4. Jesus drives out an evil spirit from a man there in Capernaum. And, and, and each, there's, it's listed in more than one gospel. As a matter of fact, you can read that in Mark chapter 1 and in Luke chapter 4. Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law that has a sick fever in Matthew chapter 8, recorded again in Mark 1 and Luke 4. Jesus heals many sick people and many oppressed people in Matthew chapter 8, again in Mark 1, and again in Luke 4. The first, his first miraculous catch of fish on the lake of Gennesaret was, was, is recorded in Luke chapter 5. Jesus cleanses a man with leprosy. In, it's recorded in Matthew 8, Matthew 8, Mark 1, and Luke 5. Jesus heals a centurion's paralyzed servant in Matthew 8 and Luke 7. Jesus heals a paralytic who was let down from the roof in Matthew 9, Mark 2, and Luke 5. Jesus heals a man with a withered hand in, in Matthew 12, in Mark 3, and in Luke 6. Jesus raises a widow's son from the dead uh, in Nain, in Luke chapter 7. Jesus calms a storm on the sea in Matthew 8, Mark 4, and Luke 8. Jesus cast demons into the herds of pigs in, in Matthew 8, in Mark 5, in Luke chapter 8. And then Jesus heals a woman uh, in the crowd with an issue of blood in Matthew 9, again in Mark 5 and Luke 8. Jesus raises Darius' daughter back to life, Matthew 9, M Mark 5, Luke 8. Jesus heals two blind men in Matthew 9. Jesus heals a man who was in unable to speak in Matthew 9. Jesus feeds 5,000 in Matthew 14 and Mark 6 and Luke 9. Jesus walks on the water in Matthew 14 and in Mark 6. Jesus heals many sick in Genesaret as they touch his garment in Matthew 14 and Mark 6. Jesus heals a Gentile woman who is demon possessed in Matthew 15 and in Mark 7. Jesus heals a deaf and dumb man in, in Mark chapter 7. Jesus feeds 4,000 plus women and children in Matthew 15 and in Mark 8. And then Jesus heals a blind man at Bethesda, at Bethesda excuse me, in uh, Mark chapter 8, Jesus heals a boy with an unclean spirit in Matthew chapter 17 and again in Mark 9 and Luke chapter 9. Mirac uh, there's a miraculous uh, 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 amount of money that, that shows up in the mouth of a fish in Matthew chapter 17. Jesus heals a blind man and a mute in Matthew 12 and again in Luke 11. Jesus heals a woman who had been crippled for 18 years. Jesus in John and Jesus heals a man with dropsy on the Sabbath day in Mark chapter 14. Jesus cleanses 10 leopards on the way to Jerusalem in Matthew, uh, in, uh, excuse me, in Luke chapter 17. Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead in John chapter 11. Jesus restores sight to Bartimaeus in Jericho in Matthew chapter 20, again in Mark 10, and again in Luke chapter 18. Jesus withers the, 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 Jesus withers the fig tree on the road from Bethany in Matthew 21, and again in Mark 11, it's recorded. Jesus heals a servant, severed ear while he's being arrested. Huh? In Mark 22. And then Jesus, the second miraculous catch of fish is at Tiberias, and it's recorded in June, uh, in, excuse me, in John, in John chapter 21. 37 different instances of miraculous things that we see recorded by Jesus throughout all four Gospels. You see, after 30, there was more. But then touch somebody next to you and say, there's still more. You see, because this was before there was ever a cross. Look at somebody say, then the cross. 
This was before Jesus went to the cross, and then he goes to the cross and sheds his precious, precious life's blood and takes on the sin of all of humanity, past, present, and future. He goes to the cross of Calvary, receives 39 stripes on his back, wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the cross of Calvary. Then there's the cross, the shedding of the blood of Jesus that reconciles all of humanity back to Jesus. But then, guess what? There's more. Then he's laid in a borrowed tomb. And he lays there for three days. But on the third day, guess what? He got up. But guess what? There's more. Because after that, after he, he, he comes out of the grave, he ascends into heaven. But before his ascension, he had promised all of his followers that he would send them a gift. Somebody say a gift. He'll send them a gift. The gift of the Holy Ghost. And so we have uh, the, the miracle of the cross. We have the miracle of the, of the resurrection. We have the ascension into heaven. And then we come in the picture. We see all the more that happened in the life of Jesus. But then comes the church. Because God's not through. Because the Lord is not through. Because he has more that he wants to do. The church comes on the scene. And, and, and the, what Jesus has promised is fulfilled in, in, in Acts chapter 2. It's called the early reign of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, you know the story. In Acts 2, they were gathered there in Jerusalem like Jesus told them to gather. They were gathered there and they were in prayer when the Bible said, and when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled all of the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. It sat upon each of them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. But there's more. Peter steps out and says, hey, because the Jewish people thought they were drunk. They said, these folks are drunk. And Peter steps out and says, they're not drunk as you suppose. It's only the ninth hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. That in the last days that he would pour out of his spirit. Notice that, y'all. He didn't say he would pour it out. He said he would pour out of. Touch your neighbor and say, you know why? Because there's more. There's more. God's not through yet. God is still working. So they're baptized with the Holy Spirit. People get healed. Man, at the gate of beautiful is healed. The, the, Spirit of the, the Holy Spirit is poured out again in, in chapter 4. The, the good news of the gospel is being preached around the world and people are being born again and the church is growing and the Bible says he's adding to the church daily such as should be saved. There's more. More and more continues to happen. But then I want, us to, I want to bring us to where we are right now because I want the church to know that in 2024 there is more. God has more for you. God's going to do more in your life. God's going to do more in your body. He's going to do more in your spirit. He's going to do more with your finances. He's going to do more with your marriage. He's going to do more with your children. He's going to give you more. Come on, touch three or four people around you like you're still alive and tell somebody that there's more. God's going to do more. More. God's up to something. More is coming. There's more in 2024. There's more. There's more. This is what I want you to do. I want you to lock in for just these last few minutes of this sermon because I'm going to bring it down to where we are right now. There's some powerful prophecies given of what is going to take place during the dispensation of time that we call the latter rain. Everybody say the latter rain. Acts chapter 2 is a picture of the former rain. What I'm about to share with you right now is a picture of the latter rain. And the scripture teaches us that in these last days, it will literally be the former and the latter rain together. 
In other words, the latter rain shall be greater than the former rain. The Bible said the glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former house. What are you trying to say, Pastor? I'm trying to tell you that I have not seen, nor has ear heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has. I'm telling you the best days of the church are not behind us. The best days of the church are still ahead of us. There is more that God wants to do. I want somebody that believes me to give God praise in this room that you know that there's more. 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 More in 2024. God's got more. God's not done yet. God's not through saving people yet, y'all. God's not through sanctifying people yet. God's not through baptizing people in the Holy Ghost. He's not through curing cancer. He's not, he's not through uh, healing sugar diabetes and heart disease. He's not through pouring out his spirit. He's not through prospering people. I'm here to tell you that he is still Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God that will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I want somebody that knows you serve the El Shaddai God, the God of more than enough to give him praise because there are more bonuses coming. There's more raises coming. There's more contracts coming. Come on, touch seven people around you right now. Say, there's more. There's more. More. God's not done yet. There's more. Amen. We, we get so caught up as the church and we get, we get you know, when, it, when we start talking about end times and we get, you know, we kind of get gloomy. End times are not meant for us to be gloomy. We're supposed to celebrate the coming of Jesus. But at the same time, Jesus said, occupy until I return. What does that mean? That means that 2024 is the year for you to believe God that you're going to get that job that God said you were going to have. Amen. 2024 is the year for you to, for you to believe that this is the year of the salvation of your children that you've been praying for. <laughs> that January and February and March and April are going to be months where God is going to restore relationships. Oh, I can't get no help in here. It's going to be the moment that God does something supernatural in somebody's life. 2024. I'm not done yet. Amen. There's more. Amen. And uh, I'll take the heat on the sound today. Don't turn me down. Let me, if anybody complain, complain to me. I don't want the world to be louder than I am. L let me tell you something. Folks going to get their drunk on tonight. They're going to get high. They're going to get loud. They're going to make the no the music. And the church is supposed to be. I'm sick of being quiet. <laughs> sick of being quiet. Sick of being quiet. Tell the good news. Now, I want you to follow me. We're going to be on a journey at the close of this sermon, and this is where you really need to pay close attention. There's some powerful prophecy in God's Word that teaches us that there is more. In Hosea, Hosea chapter 5, verse 15, is where we're going to begin this little journey as we finish this sermon. In Hosea chapter 5, verse 15, the prophet Hosea says, I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. I want you to note the beginning of Hosea 5.15. He said, I will go and return to my place. It's a direct reference to Jesus returning to his place, his rightful place at the right hand of God. All right, and then when you go from chapter 5 into chapter 6, chapter 6 verse 1 says this. Watch this. 
It says, come, let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. (laughs) Oh, now listen. Come, and go, 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 go back to one. Go back to one. Thank you, thank you. Come, and let us return unto the Lord. You know, 2024, I believe, is... And even the end of this this year, I believe people are beginning to see that our hope is built in nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I, I believe people are beginning to come full circle back to the place where it all started. The people are realizing that you can't find your hope in a, in a bottle. You can't find your hope in something you smoke or snort or shoot. You can't find the, your hope in some other lady's bedroom. We got kids' church. I told you all to take them there. You're not going to find it. In, and, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you, you're not going to find your hope in swapping And leaving the natural use of a woman and burning in your lust men with men. Folks have tried that, but I think they found out that don't work either. Okay, I'm meddling now. Let me get back to the word. Let us return to the Lord. For he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. I want you to notice this next verse. Come, notice this next verse. After two days... Everybody say, after two days. After two days, he will, will, after two days, will he revive us? Everybody say, revive us. After how many days? Two days. After two days, will he revive us? In the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. After two days. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 says, But beloved, be not ignorant. Put your hand on the person next to you and say, We can't afford to be ignorant. The same prophet said, The same prophet Hosea said, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. That just means they are destroyed for spiritual ignorance. Amen? So notice what he says here, and it's it's, it's significant that you see this. He said, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Don't be ignorant of this. Know this, that one day, everybody say one day, is with the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years as one day. So if a thousand years is as one day, then two days is what? 2,000 years. If we look at where we are on the prophetic timetable, we are at that and and just beyond that two-day period. Now notice it says, take me back to Hosea 6-2. Notice what it says here. After two days, he will revive us and in the third day, He will raise us up. We know what that's referenced to. Somewhere in the third day, he doesn't say where, but somewhere in the third day, we're going to get up out of here. We're going to go home to be with the Lord. Amen? But before that, the Bible said he's going to revive us. That means something good is about to happen in this dispensation of time. God's about to do something supernatural in this church, in the body of Christ around the world. Somebody better help me preach today. Something good is about to happen. Touch somebody next to you and say, there's more. God's not through, y'all. 
we got to quit. Listen, listen, that's why. That's why. Let me, let me go back and, and, and bring it back to your remembrance. I want y'all to get this stuff. When, we, when, when I teach it, I want you to get it. That's why Peter would say something totally different than Joel. Joel, in the original prophecy in 228, said he would pour out his spirit. When Peter comes back and, say, and repeats it, he doesn't say out. He says out and adds one word, of. Because Peter realizes that this is just the beginning of what God wanted to do in the church. That there is more still to come. That's why the Bible would say, repent ye therefore and be converted. That when times, everybody say times. That's plural. Times of refreshing will come from the presence of God. It's not just a one-time thing. That's why Ephesians 5 would say, be not drunk with wine. Where is it excess? But be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why be filled there in the original Greek literally is be being filled. You know why? Because there's more. Because God's not through. We don't need to be sitting here, some of us that are a little bit older, and we've been in this thing for a long time. We don't need to make our young people feel like that God's done. God is not done. As a matter of fact, I hate to tell you old folks something. This next generation is going to see the glory of God. It, this present generation is going to see the glory of God greater than past generations because they're living in the former and the latter reign together. I've come by to tell somebody today, there is more. Tell somebody there's more. God's not done. Play real softly for me. I'm not done. <laughs> You're doing good, but just real softly. Because there's more. There's more. What God's done in your life is, a, is just something. It's just the beginning of what God's about to do. There's more. More God wants to do in these last days. God's going to show up and show out. See, what happens is, is the prophecies begin to work together. When you understand what, 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 what Hosea says, then it makes what Joel says really stand out. Because what, is, what does Joel say in Joel chapter 2 verse 20? He said, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit Peter says, pour out of. Upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Now this is what I want you to get. I'm going to give you some revelation. Y'all ready? Your old men shall dream dreams. It doesn't mean that old men are left out in the last days. Because the scripture says old men are going to dream dreams. Young men are going to see visions. Now, this is where I want, I want to give you some revelation. I want you to circle that in your Bible, underline it, and get what, what the Holy Spirit's. This is what the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Old men are going to dream dreams. Young men are going to see visions. Visions deal with what's to come. Dreams, a lot of time, deal with what has already come. We're going to, young, old men are going to help young men step into the place of seeing visions because they share with them what God has already done in their past. Oh, you don't want to hear me today. You got a, you got a testimony that a young man needs to hear. There's an older man in this room that you have been through the fire. You've been through the flood and you need to be sharing it with a younger man around you. Dreams have to do a lot of times with what you've already experienced. So what you see is a relationship and a bonding taking place between the older generation and the younger generation. And we make this happen together. We share the dreams. We share the goodness of God. You see, what happened with the children of Israel when they were on their way to the promised land, the Bible says the biggest mistake they made was that they had forgotten what God had done. Sometimes I think the biggest problem we have as older folks in the church is we forget to share what got us to where we are. Oh, I can't get nobody happy in here today. 
has God been good to you? Is there any older person in this room today that God has ever healed your body? God has ever brought a financial miracle in your life? God has ever delivered you from anything? Anybody in here in that, that you're a little bit older, you were delivered from alcohol, delivered from drugs, you were delivered out of, prom uh, of sexual promiscuity. God ever did anything supernatural in your life? Then if you're here, give God praise like you know it and you believe it in this room today. Oh, come on, church. Oh, I, I, I want somebody that God's been good to you to take about 60 seconds and praise God like he's brought you a mighty long way. How good has God been? What has God done in your life? Tell somebody how good God is. Share the goodness of God. Old men are going to dream dreams. Old men are going to dream dreams. But then be seated because there's more. Old men are going to dream dreams. Hear me now. Hear me now. Don't get antsy. There ain't no hamburger or no piece of fried chicken as, love, as much as I love it. Worth missing what I'm going to give you right now. Let me tell you old men something. You're going to have to dream your dreams. <laughs> oh, God help us. I'm going to get in trouble today. You're going to have to dream your dreams, share your dreams, and then step out of the way and let the young man have a vision. Oh, it got quiet in here now. We got a generation that we're going to turn the reins over to. You might as well get ready for it. There's a generation coming up full of the Holy Ghost and fire. Ah, somebody better help me praise God in here. Some of y'all having a hard time getting old. We got a generation coming up with visions, dreams. They got visions of, of things that God is going to do. Vision is about the future. Don't mean that God's through with us. We just need to make sure we're sharing our dreams. And it doesn't mean that God won't give an old man a vision. But we know where the future of the church lies. It lies in the hands of young men and women. Your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. Women, God's got an anointing for you in 2024. God's going to use the women of the church. I can't get help in here. But then, this is what I want you to notice. After he says all this, he makes reference to the end time. He said, I will show you wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire, pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. So if you really believe that we are living in the last days, then before you can pay close attention to the signs of the end times that are in that latter part of that verse, you cannot ignore that there's going to be an outpouring of his spirit and old men are going to dream dreams and young men are going to see visions and, upon, and then God's going to pour his spirit out on all flesh. Amen? So what does that mean? That means there's more. That means God's not done with real life church. Look around you, y'all. Look at this. Let me tell you what's happened. The enemy snuck in on us in 2020 and took us off guard and tried to take the church out and tried to close the church down. But here we are going into 2024. I want you to look around you this morning. This church is not dead. <laughs> Hallelujah. This church is still alive. As a matter of fact, come on, somebody. There's more. 
God's not done with this church. There's more. God's not done with the children of this church. There's more for our children. God's not done with the middle school and high school ministry. God, there's more. God's not done with our young adults. There's more. God's not done with the senior adults of our church. There's more. There is more yet still to come in these last days. Look at somebody next to you, smile real big and say, honey, there is more. I wrap this up today in Psalms chapter 102, verse 13. Again, in this passage of Scripture, there is reference to the end time. So I'm trying to get you to see where we are and and to prove to you that if you really believe we're in the end times then you can expect God to do more Psalms 102 verse 13 the Bible said thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion Zion represents the church God's people amen for the time to favor her yea the set time is come For thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. But then, but he says, wait. There is for the time to favor her, yea, the set time. Everybody say the set time. There's a set time to favor Zion, to favor God's people, for the glory of God to outshine any other time in history, a set time. And he tells us when that time is, right before his what? Right before his appearing. So where are we? We are at that set time. We are positioned right now for God to do more. Young people, I want you to understand 2024 is going to blow your mind. For every young person in this room and older person alike that believes that God is God and He always will be God, 2024 is going to be a year of more for you. God is about to release something. God's about to give you a new ministry. God's about to give you a new anointing. God is about to rain fresh manna from heaven on you. I want everybody in this room that believes that 2024 is the year or more to give God praise and glory in this house right now. Come on, if you really believe God's not through with you, if you really believe God's going to touch your marriage, God's going to touch your children, God's going to touch your finances, God's going to touch your body, God's going to do more. 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 Shout more. God's going to do more. More. 2024. Stand with me all over the room today. More. More. There's more. There's more. God's not done. Let me say to you today, everybody look at me. Everybody look at me. Everybody look at me. God's not done with you. You hear me? Some of you in 2023, it was a year of loss for you. Some of you went through divorce. Person, some person in your life walked out on you. You thought it would be the end. God said, "Huh, uh-uh, baby. Ain't no man or no woman hold that kind of power. (laughs) No, 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 no. God said, there's more for you. He's going to take care of you. Some of you lost somebody you loved in 2023. There's a death in you, in your life. 
someone was taken from you, devastated you. Been a tough time trying to figure out how am I going to keep going, keep moving, keep living. You know who you are, more than one in this room. How am I going to continue to live without that person? That's what God told me to tell you. There's more. He's not finished yet. Some of you lost a job in 2023. Don't look like it's coming back. It ain't coming back. Because God's got one better than that one. There's more. Some of you standing in a different phase of life. There's more. Some of you are at the place, though, that today has to be the day that you say, you know what? There's some stuff that I had in my life in 2023 that I ain't going to 2024. You hear me? Some, there's some habits you got to get rid of. Some things you've been smoking. Oh, I'm not scared of you now. Something you've been doing. Something you've been looking at. There's a relationship you got to get out of. Oh, it's going to get quiet now. Some of y'all, before this day is out, have got to lose somebody's digits. You got to take them out of your contact. Matter of fact, I'll give you a minute. Get your phone out. Go to the foyer. Make a, make a phone call that you've been needing to make for a while. Say, and my pastor told me to do it. If he ain't saved, he don't want to be saved. He ain't come to church with you yet. Be my guest. Tell him I told you. I don't care. Tell her I told you. You got to get away from folks. If you Listen, you cannot be unequally yoked together with unbelievers in 2024. You better by yourself. You need to... Some things you got to do. Decisions you got to make. Things you got to put on the altar. This is the day to do it right now. This is the moment to do it right now. Some of y'all got to put some things behind you. You've been carrying some dead weight, some heavy weight for a while. It's a habit. It's a problem. Some of you are carrying some things, some pain and some hurt. And somebody, somebody hurt you, messed you up. Let it go. Put it behind you. It's a new day. Let God heal the hurt today. Let God do what he's got to do. Because you know why? You don't want to be, you wanna, don't want to be out of position. You want to be in position for the more that God has for you that's coming up. This is what I'm going to do. We're going to close the service today like this. This is your opportunity. This is it. You got something you need to give God? You, you got something you need to let go of? You got something you need to release? You got something you need to put on the altar? Let's do it now. Let's make it happen now. Let's get ready for the more that God has for us in 2024. Let's get ready for God to do what he wants to do. There's going to be some changes in somebody's life today. There's going to be some surrender.